to first take this opportunity to invite everyone to take a virtual trip to the North Carolina coast, the beautiful North Carolina coast, so we can learn <coughs> and learn about an up and coming industry in the state, a very important industry in the state, and this is oyster aquaculture or oyster farming. In this talk, we'll cover several topics. We'll briefly describe how oysters are grown. We'll cover the current industry status and the room for the potential growth of this industry. Tim will come up and, and provide insight or perspective from an existing oyster farmer on oyster, oyster, oyster aquaculture. And Tom will come up and provide his insight on how to get involved with the industry, as well as the benefits of shellfish aquaculture. Currently in North Carolina, we have an established aquaculture industry. We're 15th in the nation as far as aquaculture production with a farm gate value of around $60 million. The industry is very diverse, but it's focused currently on freshwater species. We have huge industries with respect to rainbow trout production, hybrid striped bass, channel catfish, and tilapia. But there's significant room for growth in the marine sector. Right now, we're fairly limited in the marine sector. We have some players here, soft crabs, clams, oysters, and there's a small amount of production of marine finfish and also shrimp. There is significant room for, for growth and development in all these commodities, but we think oysters has the best potential at this particular time. The reason I say this is because multifold. We have, an advan we have a vast coastline here in North Carolina suitable for oyster production. We have the large Pamlico Sound. We also have great waters in the southeastern North Carolina coast. We also have very well established markets that are growing each year for high quality oysters. As far as looking at future potential, all we have to do is look across our northern border to the state of Virginia. Their aquaculture industry has exploded over the last 10 years. It's been incredible. For example, in 2005, the farm gate value for aquaculture production for both South, for North Carolina and Virginia was relatively the same, about $250,000. In 2014, the farm gate value for aquaculture, oyster aquaculture in Virginia was 17.1 million, while it was still around $500,000 for us in North Carolina. They have similar, we have similar natural resources, if not better than they do, so if they can do it, we can do it also. Well, let's talk about oysters. The eastern oyster is native to North Carolina. It's also native all the way from the Gulf of Mexico up the Atlantic seaboard. To produce these oysters in an aquaculture setting, there's three phases that are utilized. The hatchery phase, the nursery phase, and the grow-out phase. In the hatchery phase, it's fairly complex. In, in this phase, broodstock oysters are induced to spawn via temperature manipulation, producing fertilized eggs which hatch into free-swimming larvae. It's a fairly complex life cycle. These free-swimming larvae are held in culture tanks where they're fed cultured phytoplankton. They're filter feeders, so that's what they're fed. So this stage, this phase actually lasts about three weeks or so. And at the conclusion of the phase, we go through a process called setting. And setting is when an oyster larva looks for a permanent home. Setting can be accomplished by pla placing larva in tanks containing uh, oyster shell. And this, this is called spat on shell. They can also be set on microculch, which is finely ground oyster shells. So this results in a production of single seed oysters, whereas spat on shell will result eventually in the production of clumped oysters. For the nursery phase, single seed are produced by placing them in upweller tanks, which, which consists of an inset screen where the seed rests on. The upweller, upwelling tanks flow water through the screen, upwelling through the screen, feeding the, the growing seed. Normally seed takes about two to three months, depending on water temperature, to produce a animal for, suitable for size around quarter to a half an inch for stocking and grow out operations. And these, these upweller systems can either be land-based or floating. For grow out, the, the traditional ways to grow out oysters is in North Carolina and elsewhere is bottom culture. In bottom culture, it's fairly simple. Spat on shell oysters are simply planted on the bottom and allowed to grow. It typically takes from one to three years to produce a market, market size oyster. These oysters are suitable, since they're clumped oysters, they're suitable for oyster roast and also shucking operations. But more and more folks here in North Carolina and elsewhere are getting into what's called water column culture. Water column culture uses different types of culture gear. In North Carolina, we use floating bags. We also use off-bottom cages, and there's interest in other types of gear, such as long, the long line system. 
Off-bottom culture affords growers to produce a very high quality products. It's raised off the sediment and it produces single oysters for the lucrative and expanding half-shell market. There's a lot of work involved, however. The oysters as they grow must be sorted and, and split as they grow to maintain proper stocking densities. The gear must be maintained, repaired, and cleaned, and oysters must be harvested and sorted for market. But the result of all of this work is the production of a premium, high-quality oyster that's suitable for, for the most elite, most expansive uh, restaurants out there. The very high demand, Tim and Tom will both talk about some more attributes of oysters in their, their section. And as far as the existing market, existing status of the industry. Right now we're still small potatoes or small oysters if you will compared to states such as Virginia. Right now the total shellfish leases that we have is around 250 um, and with production acreage of a little bit less than 2,000 acres and the farm gate value of around $480,000. But what we see here is, is, is some growth here and the growth that we really see is in water column leases. In 2000 in 11, there was only two water column leases in the state with a total acreage of six acres. In 2015, there were 35 leases in place with a total acreage of 110. And right now, there are almost 30 outstanding applications that were made last year that's, that's going through processing right now for water column leases. So this will, this will, in, will double our industry fairly quickly. Now, Sea Grant, also works on, on several other, other uh, with other institutions and other entities to, to maintain the growth and expansion of the aquaculture industry in a sustainable fashion. We're looking at, at making uh, leasing and siding more efficient, reducing user conflicts, increasing public awareness, developing best management practices for oyster aquaculture, minimizing diseases through monitoring, uh, improving genetics and strain development, development and also expanding the markets. And with that said, I'll hand it off to, to Tim. Thank you. I've enjoyed recreational fishing and commercial fishing in North, North Carolina coast for about 50 years, and I've seen a lot of changes in our environment. Overdevelopment, overfishing, uh, pollution runoff from golf courses, roads, sewage treatment plants has made a drastic uh, negative impact on our marine estuaries. Even looking at our neighbor to the north in Chesapeake Bay, uh, just a few years ago, they had lost 99% of their wild oyster crop. Now, an oyster is pretty much a canary in, in the coal mine. Uh, it's a very simple animal. It doesn't have a central nervous system. And it's strangely enough, an, the only animal that a vegan can eat. That was something new that I had learned. <clears throat> but this animal is a filter feeder, and it cleans the pollutants and also creates a healthy piece of meat. Now, traditionally, oyster farming was done by methods of a guy getting up on his boat at five o'clock in the morning, February, 25 degrees outside, putting on hip boots made out of rubber, walking around in the mud, back-breaking work, only for a few months out of the year. Historically, I always thought that oyster farming had to do with, uh, or oyster harvesting had, can only been done in months that had an R. I was wrong about that. Uh, some new technology has come along, some new methods that have allowed us to harvest oysters all year long. <clears throat> when I first started looking at oyster farming a couple of years ago, uh, this technology was just starting to come in place. I utilized some uh, <clears throat> software developed by UNCW at Center for Marine Science by Dr. Troy Alpin to, do, to use something called a sighting tool. It's actually a GIS map that allows me from a satellite to come down and view an area that I might be interested in. And things that I would be interested in is water depth, uh, turbidity, uh, salinity, and <clears throat> other things that would make an oyster taste good. Now, these high-end oyster markets are somewhat like wine connoisseurs. We actually have what's called an oyster flavor wheel. And the oyster on the front end might be salty. And then after that comes sort of a mushroom taste or a cheese flavor finished with butter. So it's not just your oyster roast oysters. These are premium, premium products. So using, utilizing the siting tool, I was able to find a convenient location in the maritime area right outside of Wilmington in what is called the Masonboro Reserve. It's actually a federally, federally managed 
uh, property with pristine water. <clears throat> Utilizing the assistance from the Broodstock development from UNCW, Virginia Institute of Marine Science, we've actually come up with an oyster that is a healthy broodstock, but they, they've even taken a step beyond. It's not genetically modified, but what they have done is come up with an oyster that has three chromosomes. They call it a triploid, so it doesn't have the ability to reproduce. And as a result, it grows faster and creates a better animal. Now, even here in North Carolina, strangely enough, all of the triploids that I grow can use the same restroom. Once I get these little babies, I, right from the hatchery, and as you look at this picture, that's probably about 6,000 little individual single animals. We take them out on the farm, we plant them in various types of cages, and wait for a year to 16 months before the product starts to develop, and we start selling them individually. Now, it does require a tremendous amount of work, as Jeff had said. I handle my oysters probably 12 times from the time that I purchased them to the time that I go to market. A natural oyster har harvester would handle it once. He'd go out and get it, and he'd go sell it. So there is a lot of labor intensity in it. But ultimately, we're going to the half shell market. We want a consistent size, a consistent shape, and a consistent flavor. Now, the oyster is really an intricate animal, and it is, a, it is the simplest of all animals. But that incredibly simple animal has a lot to do with sustaining our future because it is the main source of keeping our estuaries clean and it creates a habitat for 94% of the other marine life that grows up in the ocean. Some of them grow up as babies and then they go out in deep sea. Some of them spend their whole time in the estuary. But it is the sustainability of our future. Thank you, Tom. I grew up in New Bern at the confluence of two rivers in eastern North Carolina that were the site of infamous fish kills when I was in high school. And the water became so, so oxygen starved that millions of fish died and it happened twice. So it left a big impression on me. When I finished school, I was looking for work that meant something to me and a way to get back to the rivers that I grew up on. And I saw Tim Oyster Farming on Facebook, of all places. So I built up the courage and called him out of the blue. And he was on the way to an oyster conference in my hometown. So I listened to the universe, and I attended the oyster conference. And I met so many people, and I learned so much. Um, I was elated. I was beyond stoked. But I know you're all interested in different things. There's so many things to be interested in, but regardless of what you're interested in, these steps can help you get involved in what you love. Here's the synopsis. Build your network, grow your knowledge, and get involved. Get involved with local organizations. For me, it was these organizations. Volunteer your time, read their publications, build your network, grow your knowledge. Attend workshops and conferences, anywhere that you can find a group of people that are interested in this, go to that place and find out what these people are looking for in, in terms of skill sets, in terms of people, and find out exactly what they need. So it, so it can really make you a more effective person when it comes time for you to help. So go out there and work or volunteer working with people that are doing what you want to do. Do any job. Every job that they don't want to do is a job that you can excel at. And give it your all. Everything that you do, regardless of pay scale, will come back and pay in dividend in spades later on. And oysters are bringing jobs and economic opportunities to counties in eastern North Carolina that, that, that need them. Uh, and these are, these are jobs with incomes that are going to be spent within their communities. And they're on the water jobs, like we like in eastern North Carolina. North Carolina has an enviable amount of pristine coastal waters. And we're creating a world-class oyster right here on our coast. And oysters are incredible. They're simple and incredible. Oysters use the excess nitrogen that creates the pollution that causes the fish kills. So 
the more oysters that are in the water, the less nitrogen, the fewer the fish gills. Oysters also provide critical habitat for many soon to be delicious species out there, including fish and crabs and shrimp. And some days when I'm out on Tim's farm, the shrimp are jumping inside of the boat. There are so many of them out there. The flounders are flashing their bellies. I'm out there and I'm hungry the entire time I'm out there before I even break a sweat. And so the oysters protect the estuaries. And just as the oysters are protecting the estuaries, your knowledge and your network will help protect you as you grow yourself into whatever you want to be. But just remember, get involved and stay involved. Thank you.